Hello you wonderful people I hope you all are doing absolutely great welcome back to yet another video and in today's video I will discuss with you all a complete roadmap for second year biomedical engineering students I have already made the roadmap for first year students uh, if you can find that video here the i button and uh, if you are in second year I am here with you all with a complete roadmap which will make sure that by the end of second year you are having proper skills you need to secure an internship or a job by the end of final year or third year. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. Okay, so I believe you guys can see the screen. So for second year students, I have basically divided the roadmap into four uh, pointers. One is the academic foundation. Second one is industry exposure and gaining practical skills. Then we will talk about professional development and also after that I will be discussing with you all a couple of trips and bonuses which have worked really well for me when I was in college. So let's start off with the first one which is academic foundation. In this you will be seeing three different uh, or three important things that you need to focus on. First is mastering the fundamentals, developing the programming skills and also exploring some design and stimulation tools that is used by biomedical engineers. I believe the screen looks better right now, correct? Cool. So first, let's focus on uh, the fundamentals. Why I talk or why am I putting this pointer here is because you need to have a really good understanding about, uh, you know, core subjects or core topics like engineering mechanics, material sciences, anatomy, physiology. So whatever we covered in the first year roadmap, those are the basics but now we are talking about getting better on those topics right understanding like how biological systems are working how engineering principles can be applied to medicine and the, the biggest question that you will have right now is how do we study this right so the first and the foremost important thing that you need to focus on is the courses that are there in your uh, curriculum so prioritize now when you start second year you start studying uh, uh, the basic fundamental subjects that you like basically you start off with biomedical engineering subjects and these subjects are very uh, much the fundamentals and the basics you understand these subjects properly it is going to be very easier for you to pursue uh, the subjects and the course in the future or the coming years so first focus on the core subjects that you have in your curriculum second is reviewing the key concepts so when you're studying this key uh, core subjects it is very important for you guys to understand the key concepts and understand it in a in such a way that you know you can implement it as and when required wherever in uh, wherever needed and the last one is focus on problem solving you need to regularly seek out and solve and practice problems related to core subjects now in your subjects or in your, if you have textbooks book uh, it's great there will, there, there will be a lot of problems that you can try solving and the more problems you solve the more basic understanding you will develop as to how to apply engineering principles in medicine right so three things you have to focus uh, first is understand and go in depth on your core subjects review key concepts and then also solve problems as much as you can and from where you can study this first is textbook second is online courses and third is Khan Academy so if you want any textbook, if you want any textbook, you just need to drop the name in this WhatsApp group and I will share across the PDF format of that book. Online courses, you can always make sure that you are going to Coursera, you can go into Skillshare, you can go into NPTEL, you can go to Udemy or any other educational site that you want to learn courses. Okay. So that's about educational uh, sites or online courses that you can take and last is khan academy because they are, this this platform is completely free you can study physics chemistry and uh, the basic fundamentals of human anatomy very well in this uh, platform khan academy okay so what i've covered so far i've covered three important things that you have to focus on to master the fundamentals why, why is it important uh, step by step process and also from where you need to study once you're done with the fundamentals, you need to also start developing some programming skills. Why programming skills, you may ask. So now in today's time and in today's uh, industry, programming is a very essential tool that you need to learn in, in, in order to do data analysis, in order to do simulation, in order to do automating tasks in biomedical engineering and stuff like that. So uh, studying uh, programming, one of the programming languages is really, really, really going to benefit you. 
So when you are in second year, first year you can understand the basics of programming uh, that I've already mentioned in the previous roadmap and in second year you need to figure out one language and master that. So you can always go for Python, you can always go for MATLAB, you can always go for C++, also you can go for LabVIEW. Now these links that I have put here is basically a zero to hero or a tutorial which will help you to learn everything from scratch and make you uh, a master in that specific language okay so choose the language and once you start uh, once you're done with choosing the language you need to start with very basic thing basic concepts like variables data types control flow statements functions so these are very basic topics which you need to focus on and once that is done so these videos that i have mentioned here all of these videos have small small mini projects that you can do so that you can implement whatever you're learning and build projects which you can always add in your resume and learning resources again books tutorials youtube channels if you want any book to learn python matlab solidworks lab view always just need to join this whatsapp group and drop me the book's name and i will send it across to you completely free of cost but it will be a pdf format you can always join online community same group you can join we have a bunch of students who are collaborating with each other studying together and developing their skills together so you can always join that as well so once you master the fundamentals you have to develop some programming skills i have also told you how to do that and third and the foremost explore design and stimulation tools okay what i mean by this is you need to uh, familiarize yourself with computer aided design softwares why because when you talk about biomedical engineering there are a lot of things that happens or that involves designing not only designing uh, so let's say when you are developing a prosthetic, you need to understand where the pressure points will be. So to, how do you do that? Finite element analysis, right? So basically, uh, this specific software helps you to stimulate the mechanical behavior of these devices under different conditions. If you apply this much pressure, this much environmental condition, how it will react, okay? So that's why it is important. Which ones are the best? SolidWorks. Again, I have given a YouTube channel or a tutorial from where you can learn SolidWorks. Then ANSYS, again it is a wonderful tool which is very much used in the industry currently and the last one is Blender. Blender is something which you can always use to design human models. You, you can design a heart, you can design lungs, you can design different body parts, you can also design prosthetics and things like that. So Blender is a very interesting course. I have also given the link to study these specific uh, softwares via YouTube. Uh, once that is done, you need to start with basics of CAD. Basically, as I mentioned, when you are studying SOLIDWORKS, you will have uh, a, a lot of basics that you need to study really well, right? And then you have to learn core features like how to develop 2D sketches into 3D sketches, extruding features, assembling different parts and things like that. This I've also covered in the first year, but first year you can just focus on the basics. And second year, when you're studying this, you can get into a little more uh, intermediate level or advanced level of these softwares. Then exploring FEA techniques, right? now. Uh, when I talk about software, SOLIDWORKS and Blender is used for designing but ANSYS is a software which is used for finite element analysis. None of the biomedical engineering students in their first year to four year of college study this software. If you study this only software, that will make you stand out from everyone. So make sure that you are studying that. So once I am done with this roadmap, we will be starting this uh, together. So it will take time but you can always start, don't wait for me. So explore FEA techniques, what are the different uh, FEA concepts, finite element analysis concepts, understanding the introduction and you know how CAD software packages offer built-in FEA analysis or modules, so go through these things in detail. How to study, again you don't know how to study, I have already given a tutorial link so you can refer to those online tutorials, you can do certification courses, from where you will do certification courses, I have covered it here. Uh, I told you about online platforms like Coursera, Udemy, Skillshare, you can always go there and uh, figure out a certification course that suits the best. And finally, university resources in your university, they will teach you SOLIDWORKS. Most probably they are not going to teach you anything about ANSYS. So make sure that you are maybe uh, taking uh, use, making use of uh, your college resources or university resources to figure out the same. So now we have built the academic foundation, right? We mastered the fundamentals. We know what to study, where to study, how to study. We know how to study programming language, which uh, YouTube channel to refer, which skills to learn. And also we know about designing and stimulation tools that you need to study in the second year. 
Once your academic foundation is built, simultaneously you need to focus on getting industrial exposure and gaining practical skills. How do you do that or how do you get that? End of the day, everything will uh, boil down into internships and research opportunities and things like that. Right. So let's talk about research opportunities first. What is the importance of research opportunities? Basically, there are a lot of research that is happening in the biomedical engineering industry or in the healthcare industry. So you need to familiarize yourself with these industrial or research opportunities or the things that are happening in the industry. Why, if you ask me, so that you can apply classroom knowledge into real world problems. Until and unless you understand what problems are there in the industry, you cannot implement whatever you are studying in the biomedical engineering, right? So when you do uh, research on the opportunities or the research opportunities, you actually tend to think how you can apply these classroom principles or knowledge that you are gaining every day in your college to real to solve real world problems. It will help you to develop critical thinking and problem solving skills. And uh, you can also publish a lot of papers wherein you can collaborate with researchers and become uh, uh, showcase yourself as a co-author of that publication. And also it will help you to significantly boost your resume. And what are the steps to do this? First is always get in touch with your college professors because these people are always involved in some kind of research and some kind of projects. So first thing when you're in second year, reach out to your mentors, your college professors and ask them, ask them about any research public paper or publishing that they're doing and be part of it. Then schedule meetings to discuss their research. So basically first you identify which professor you have to connect with. Then you schedule a time wherein you both can sit and talk. You can tell this is what you want to do. If they are doing something similar, they can add you in the team and do something like that. And then once you're done with that, always be prepared to showcase your academic background and eagerness to learn. So when you go and talk to a professor, you should tell that, okay, these are the research opportunities that I have come across while doing my research and I want to work on specific topic that you are interested in and you can maybe seek guidance so in that way they'll always showcase it will always showcase yourself as someone who is open to learn eager to learn wanting to do more research and you know having that kind of persona resources college department websites often list faculty research areas so you can always use google scholar to search for publications by professors in your department if you don't know how to do it i have already made a detailed video on uh, one of uh, the research and uh, research methodologies and which software you can use to do the same how you can automate these things at the cost of a pizza if you don't know that video should be somewhere here or i'll list it in the description you can always go and watch that so that's how you have to do or come across research opportunities once that is done then it comes to internships what is important what is internship why is it important internship is basically uh, a period of time wherein you join a company as a student scholar who is just wanting to get an exposure and understand how the industry is working. So when you do an internship, it basically does three important things. First, it helps you gain practical experience from the industry. You can understand how industry is working and how you get uh, to apply these knowledge that you have in the industry. And it helps you to network with a lot of working professionals, which eventually helps you with job opportunities and research opportunities and uh, internship opportunities in the future as well. And also it will help you to validate your skills and interests through real world application. So that's why internships are very important. I started doing internship from my first year onwards and I explored various internships. So I highly recommend you guys to do internships as much as you can. Okay. Now coming on how to land an internship. First thing that you need to do is you need to identify and research companies, institutes, hospitals, wherever you want to do internship. And you can always utilize resources like LinkedIn, company websites, uh, job boards, which can be Indian, Gla Indeed, Glassdoor, Internshala uh, on biomedical engineering. That's how you identify first. Once you identify, you go through the website and understand what kind of research opportunities or what kind of internship opportunities are they offering, if at all they are offering. If not, then you have to understand what they are doing and then you have to reach out to them cold, like via cold email or cold SMS or cold calls or anything that works for you. Once you understand what kind of research or internship opportunity you are getting, you have to modify your resume accordingly. Biggest problem that you will face is when you are in first year, you will feel like, what should I add in my resume? Uh, there's a video in my channel in which I have uh, explained in detail how to make a resume. You can always refer that video. 
so you need to tailor make your resume according to the internship opportunity that you are applying to okay once that is done you have to prepare for these interviews you can always google some common questions that can be asked or you can always reach out to me if you want mock interviews or preparations for this and then as i said once you start uh, so researching on linkedin indeed glassdoor and company websites these are few of the three important websites which has helped me when i was in first year to get internships one is internshala second is indeed and last one is linkedin i would say linkedin is the best internshala being the second best and indeed being the third okay so that's how you need to land a internship so now you so you need to understand okay you are building your academic foundation simultaneously you are uh, getting the industrial knowledge and industrial experience and the industry's relevant skills and then simultaneously you are implementing everything by doing an internship when you are studying so this is how you should grow as a student so by the time you reach final year you are uh, you are getting placed in one of the organizations okay so done with internships then you need to take uh you need to participate in a lot of uh what's a pro projects and design challenges what i basically trying to uh, say here is that you need to take part in a lot of hackathons you need to take part in a lot of workshops competitions you need to do a lot of mini projects so that you implement whatever you are studying so basically when you uh, do this what happens is you need to uh, you tend to get a uh, real world uh application hands on experience on the things that you're studying it helps you to develop your technical skills basically like today you will be making a small project and as you start making projects one by one one by one you will never know that you have become an expert and you have started making uh, advanced level projects so it helps you to develop your technical skills it helps you to develop your communication skill it helps you to work with a uh, team environment it helps you uh, to it helps you to be a team person gain leadership skills a lot of things that you learn and also in the end when you do these things you can always develop a portfolio which showcases about all the projects that you have done only in the second year right so that you can always add in your resume and how to do this basically research online right uh, if you don't know where all these things are happening join this whatsapp group i have given the link here you can just click on that join the whatsapp group and be part of the amazing community that we have and uh, resources uh, as i always say you can always go to youtube search for uh, biomedical mini projects and always do google search and search for biomedical mini projects and things like that that that's how you develop your projects and design challenges then learning basic finite element analysis this is the uh, most i think most important skill that you should have as a biomedical engineer so i have already told you guys where to study how to study and why is this used i have given it separately because it is a practical skill that is used very much in the industry that's why i have added it, added it here so you can go through this in detail i will be sharing the details in the description you can go through the document in detail so that's why i am not going to explain it i have given a basic gist about this on the previous topic so now we have academic foundation we have we have started getting the industrial exposure and we are trying to develop the practical skills then comes professional development oh my god there is a lot to cover in this so <laughs> i will not trouble you guys much so i will quickly uh, make it short and uh, look a little better so that we can get on to the topics one by one so first thing is communication and soft skill a very important skill that you should have because until and unless you can communicate or you can articulate your knowledge to others it's of no use right so developing communication skill is very important you need to uh, you need to be fluent with your english you need to be fluent with your tonality and things like that and for that you need to do is take up the opportunities to learn and grow right or to develop your english so always you can consider um writing like writing is the best thing how you can improvise your uh, communication skill apart from writing you can you can always engage in teamwork activities like five of uh, the five of the team members uh, from your class can join in together work on a project and talk in english to articulate or tell things about that project that will help you to develop your technical communication right and if 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 you want to just uh, join a bunch of people and learn and develop your english then toastmaster is a wonderful organization where uh, you can develop public speaking skills leadership skills it is a non profit organization so you can always take 
and make use of this wonderful website that you have here okay and learning resources is uh, again you can always take up public speaking courses on coursera edx linkedin udemy wherever you feel you uh, you feel comfortable with and apart from that there are two books uh, that i would suggest is the five dysfunctions of a team which is a wonderful book by patrick lencioni it always gives you about uh the valuable insights into building high performing teams that includes a lot of communication skill leadership skill and how to come out as a team leader and the second book that i forgot to mention here is how to win an influential uh, influence friends i guess so or people i don't know uh, amazing book you can give a read to that as well that will eventually help you to understand human psychology and also uh develop communication skills in the best way possible okay so once you develop your communication skill you need to develop your network how do you never develop your network it's very easy you need to attend a lot of workshops and industrial events you need to connect with relevant people on linkedin and you need to seek mentorship if you want to network with me i can always help you to get in touch with a lot of bunch of like biomedical engineers amazing folks industry experts and you know industry leaders but for that you need to reach out to me you need to connect with me first so connect with people on linkedin if you want mentorship you can always go and book a one on one session with me where you can get mentorship from me as well if if you feel that i am good enough to guide you and the learning resources for this would be networking events uh, you can always head out to this website called meetup.com or eventbrite.com a lot of events are happening on a weekly basis uh, you can just filter it out with respect to medical or healthcare events and go and talk to people meet them connect with them online and offline events can be found here so always make sure that you can go and see that and also mentorship is like many universities have alumni network you can reach out to them seek for mentorship and uh, try to grow accordingly in that aspect so once your soft skill and communication is done your network is built you need to work on your resume right why resume because resume is a replica or a duplicate of you in a written format which a person reads and understands about you so you need to have a really strong resume which talks about your skill what skill we all have mentioned it on the top uh communication skill technical skill like academic foundation so talking about those skills talking about your experience the internships that you have done what you have achieved or what you have done in that internship and uh, listing your portfolio listing all your projects one by one that's how you make a wonder class top notch resume how to uh, a step by step process is first is to under identify the key skills i have already mentioned it you like for example your skill will be python matlab solid works uh answers fea which is finite element analysis and things like that tailor a resume is like when you apply for a job go through the job description and modify uh, your uh, resume accordingly if you are applying for internships also in that case you need to modify your uh, resume according to the internship opportunity that you are applying to and then developing a portfolio the best way to do that is develop your linkedin profile if you are not interested in using linkedin you can always use a professional website let's say my name is sejan thomas i can always make a website called www.sejanthomas.com and that can be my website where i have listed all about myself my technical skills my projects my experience and everything in detail so that's a creative way to list your, uh, to develop your portfolio learning resources on how to do this resume writing and portfolio cre- portfolio creation behance is wonderful website wherein you can list your portfolio which can be visually appealing and looks very attractive at the same time you can always reach out to uh, your college counselors or your college seniors to reach out and uh, understand how to write a resume if you don't have any of these things i have already made a video on my channel on how to build a resume from scratch for biomedical engineers go and watch that video amazing video it will help you a lot so uh, coming quickly we have figured out academic foundation we have figured out how to give industry exposure and practical skills and we have also understood how to develop ourselves as a person how to develop our personality and last bonus that i would like to tell or share with you guys is stay updated you need to get on linkedin and read as much as biomedical articles as possible uh, you can google down biomedical news every week and you can just understand what is happening in the industry um so staying up to date is very important you can read a lot of blogs and publications and papers to understand or to get uh, insights about the industry and consider specialization like when you are in second year when you are in fourth semester after you finish your third year uh, third semester you need to figure out what do you like do you like uh, 
like let's say finite element analysis or do you like coding or do you like building uh, biomedical products or do you like working with the hardware or do you like working with the circuits so having a clear vision in mind start figuring out what you like doing and then consider taking a specialization on that in the third year and fourth year i'll t- i'll help you uh, guys with the same and also start preparing for interviews you can always reach out to me if you want mock interviews from your second year onwards a resume review or anything of that sort you can always reach out to me so that's about it that's the road map i have for second year students so if you are a second year student and if you don't know what you have done in first year i would highly recommend you guys to go to the first year video that i have made follow that road map in 6 months it's a one year road map but i want you to finish that in 6 months and then remaining 6 months from your next semester onwards you can follow the road map that i have showcased here for you guys to uh, develop uh, your second year journey while you're doing biomedical engineering so that's about it if you like this video please share it with all your second year college students or biomedical engineering students and if you know first years always send this video across to them will be really helpful and i'll see you in the next with a road map for third year students till then stay safe stay home let's learn and grow together make sure you are dropping in comments any questions any queries any video suggestions any help you want drop it in the comments you can always join the whatsapp community the link is in the description and i will see you in the next with the third year road map till then stay safe stay home signing off it's your biomed pro to buy